Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Throughout history, Wonder Woman has held a special place in the hearts of people everywhere. She is a powerful, independent leader who has saved the comic world on so many different occasions. But to the real world, she's more than that. She's a symbol of love, a symbol of progress, a symbol of power to every little girl out there who wanted to be what the world didn't believe they could be. The world has changed dramatically since Wonder Woman's first appearance in 1941, but her purpose has stayed the same. So making a movie around her without hurting that purpose is a huge challenge. In 2006, Joss Whedon decided to take that challenge. Although the movie was eventually cancelled, the story about what happened with Whedon's story is incredibly interesting. So let's get into the cancelled Wonder Woman movie. You may know Whedon as the writer for Firefly, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, or most likely the director of Avengers 1 and 2. At the time, Joss Whedon was known to do strong female characters right, so having him do the film for arguably the most iconic female character of all time was a no-brainer. At this point, Joss Whedon had an amazing hot streak on television, so he wanted to take the next step up to work on a feature-length Hollywood film. Warner Brothers was already looking to make a live-action adaption for their DC characters for a while, so when Joss Whedon expressed his interest, so did Warner Brothers. So after he got the okay, Whedon got working on the script. Later in the video, we'll get into the full script and the ending of this cancelled Wonder Woman movie, but first, let's go through the history, because it's just as interesting. Lately, there's been a lot of controversy around Whedon's treatment of women. His ex-wife has come out to say that Joss Whedon is a hypocrite preaching feminist ideals, so it makes this Wonder Woman script that much more complicated. This script has come under a lot of flack for this exact reason. I mean, hell, just take one look at Twitter and you'll realize the general consensus on this script, which is only making people more nervous for Joss Whedon's upcoming Batgirl film. But by far the biggest criticism of the script is that Wonder Woman is not the main character. It's Steve Trevor. The entire film is from his perspective, which many people believe is a horrible direction for the Wonder Woman film. And yeah, I'm with you there. That's like having an Iron Man movie where Pepper Potts is the main character instead of Iron Man. So it's safe to say that this is the biggest complaint of the film. We do have to remember that this was the first draft of the film though. Most first drafts are pretty terrible. But I just want to read off one line here that shows you how this Wonder Woman story was going to go. When I first read this, it kind of shocked me, and I know that sounds like a BuzzFeed article when I say that, but I think you'll understand. So this line picks up where Steve Trevor is talking to Wonder Woman about her helping with the people of the city. Steve Trevor says, You'll make your show, fight your fight, and people will love you for it. And then they'll need you for it, and it'll start to grate, to bore you, and one day you'll just go back home to paradise. Because every day you wake up knowing you can just go back to paradise. You're not a hero, Diana. You're a fucking tourist. So, yeah, this is the Wonder Woman movie we almost got. Having Steve Trevor be the main character is a problem, but having him be a genuine ass to Diana is a huge problem. For a movie that's supposed to show the strength of a heroic female figure, it sure likes putting her down a lot. But let's set that aside and talk more about the film's production. Who did Whedon want to play Wonder Woman? It's hard to imagine anybody that's not Gal Gadot at this point. I don't want to be Bob Sponge. Bob Sponge? Sponge Bob. Bob Sponge? I don't want to be Bob Sponge. Whedon actually said that he wanted Kobe Smulders to play as Wonder Woman. And although it never happened, he was able to bring her in for her role in the Avengers. And hey, I can see why, she's a catch. So what went wrong? Why did we never see this Wonder Woman solo film? Well, the studio and Whedon's visions were just different. Whedon wanted it one way and Warner Brothers wanted it the other. If we know anything about Whedon, it's that he hates studio interference. That's why he points to the studio when asked why Age of Ultron never lived to the hype. When Whedon was asked to elaborate on what happened to the Wonder Woman film by Empire, this is what he said. I worked really hard on that movie and it meant a lot to me but I don't know if what I was trying to do would fit in with what the studio's vision is. I had to take on the film that, well, nobody liked. We just saw different movies, and at the price range this kind of movie hangs in, that's never going to work. I can't really blame them for this. If you're going to drop hundreds of millions of dollars into an A-list superhero movie, you better be damn sure you enjoy that script. And at the time, Whedon only had Buffy and Firefly under his belt, so his name did not carry the weight that it does today. So now that we know what happened to this movie, let's get into the leaked script and the controversial story that is Joss Whedon's Wonder Woman. 
The beginning of the story follows the same beats as the 2017 Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman lives in the land of Themyscira, a section of land invisible to the real world. She lives there with her people, the Amazonians, a race of only women who ruled the land. One day, a pilot crash lands into their territory. This man's name is Steve Trevor, and yeah, yeah, I know you guys know this part, but this is where the similarities end, with Whedon's script and the 2017 version. This version takes place in present day, not World War I like the 2017 version. So after Steve Trevor crashes, Wonder Woman and Hip Hot Hippolyte Hypo. Here, let me just do this real quick. Hippolyte. Yeah, okay, there we go, yeah. So Wonder Woman and Hippolyte battle it out to see whether or not they will kill Steve Trevor for invading their land. Ultimately, Hippolyte wins, but Wonder Woman's passion is enough to convince her to let Steve go. So Diana goes with him, desperate to understand and help the world of men. Steve Trevor and Wonder Woman eventually end up in Gateway City, a city overrun by crime. Then suddenly Wonder Woman sees a criminal. She immediately goes to stop him, only to be shot point blank. After some recovery time, she has found a new hatred of firearms. Diana learns about the world of men as she tries to combat the crime that has sprung up from poverty and inequality, more or less taking down one bully at a time in her efforts to save the world. Whedon also depicted Wonder Woman losing in her first two fights, first against the main villain of the film, Strife, who in this movie is changed to be a male villain despite Strife's comic reputation as a towering female threat. In her first fight with Strife, a falling building takes her down. And in the second, Strife uses Trevor as a bargaining chip, demanding that she turns herself in in exchange for keeping him alive. And when she does so, it leaves her powerless. It's an odd choice to portray your divining hero as genuinely helpless, and certainly a story beat that would have divided audiences. Diana remains powerless until a small meeting with Hippolyte allows Diana to find the strength she needs to fight back. After gaining her powers back, Wonder Woman boards one of the silliest and simultaneously most iconic comic vehicles, her invisible jet. Yeah, I'm not joking, the actual invisible jet. In true Whedon form, he plays it for laughs, with everyone around ridiculously confused while Diana is completely oblivious as to what is going on. Stripe's whole motivation remains murky even as the film approaches the final battle, but at the heart of their master plan is a gigantic mechanical winged monster machine with three heads which Strife calls Mer... Khmer... Wait, just let me do this again real quick. Alright, here we go. Cut short, you bitch. This joke isn't funny. Okay, wow. Not, not funny. Not cool. But we'll just keep on going. So yeah, at this point Wonder Woman is in an invisible jet and Strife is in a mechanical bird. It's getting pretty wacky. But with the power of love, Wonder Woman defeats Strife and saves the day. And as Strife dies, he warns her that her actions have angered the god of war, Ares his goofy ass mustache. And in the film's final moments, Diana and Steve share a kiss happily ever after. And that's the end of the original Wonder Woman. I can see why people believe it to be controversial, and yeah, I'm with you. Having a Wonder Woman movie feel like a Steve Trevor movie is not good for the character or her history. I respect Whedon as a director, he's made some great films and shows, but this movie would have been a huge misstep to say the least. And I'm more than happy with the movie that we got instead. And if Whedon had directed this, well, monstrosity, then we never would have gotten his Avengers, which was great, and that changed the history of superhero movies. So I'd say everything went pretty damn well for this one in the end. And if you want to learn more about, well, anything, then you should really check out this week's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 17,000 classes of anything you can think of. Editing, movie production, game design, and so much more. And with a premium membership, you can get unlimited access to all of these amazing classes taught by actual experts in their field. All for less than $10 a month, which makes it one of the best deals in online education. And since Skillshare is making this cancelled project series possible right now, the first 200 people to sign up using the link you see here and in the description will get the first two months free. So if you want to learn about basically anything you can think of, head over to skl.sh slash cut short and get started today. And while you guys do that, I'm going to go ahead and watch my Skillshare class on Overwatch because I have been playing a lot of it recently and if I want to get out of silver, I'm really going to need this. So I don't know why you're uh, still on this video, but 
After editing through some of this, I actually was reading a little bit more of the script and I found probably my least favorite line right after, what is this, some kind of suicide squad? So at this point in the Wonder Woman film, we have Diana and Trevor trying to get into a club and there's a bouncer there and he does not appreciate that they want to get into this club. And uh, these are actual lines from the script. So Diana says, I haven't time for this. I am die. And then the bouncer interrupts her and says, doesn't matter who you are. I'm the bouncer, bitch. And the first rule of clubbing is never piss off the bouncer. So then it cuts to them outside the door. And Diana says, I don't get it. And Steve says, what? And Diana says, he didn't bounce. Get it? Cause bouncer. That's the joke. I hate this movie. <laughs> 